Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Everyday Night. I'm Joe. And I'm Jeff. And Jeff. Hey, Joe. Tonight's discussion, I thought we would talk about, for, for a couple of reasons, I thought we might talk about the nature of competition in martial arts. And, and by doing that, we're talking about, in many ways, martial sports as, as a different thing there's there's a if it is if it's a if two people are agreeing to compete right it's it's one thing even if they're fighting on the street it's not um an assault and a defense it's a two people agreeing squaring off and agreeing to right. do, if there are rules to it it's a sport pretty much I, that's that's the way i look at the difference as well yeah. uh so, I mean, a martial sport is sort of by definition competitive. Right. Um, martial arts are not necessarily competitive. I'm, or certain forms of uh, Tai Chi, for instance, can be used where the goal is internal, where it's simply about learning better balance and being in better physical condition and you yeah, know, lots absolutely. of other things. Although you, I've heard Tai Chi defined as slow motion Kung Fu, and it is. The, the movements are exactly that. But right. in it is in a lot of activities, you are competing with yourself. You're right. competing with your last performance, your last day, your, your current state you're trying to improve. So there is... Speaking of improving my current state... Yes. What are you drinking? <laughs> oh, um, I have. <laughs> I just <laughs> doing that, so I, I have a glass of Suave. It's a dry uh, white Italian wine from the Veneto region around Verona, generally. Um, it chilled. It's today's really warm outside. It seems the perfect thing on a hot day. Is it Rico? Is the name Rico Suave. <laughs> this is an authentic. <laughs> okay. For those that was an authentic eighty reference. <laughs> old. Oh my God! Is that old song musician? Yeah. Late eighties. Late eighties. Late eighties. Early nineties. Yes. By the eponymous Rico Suave. <laughs> <laughs> and then anyway, suave as in suave, and this is suave as in the Italian wine denomination. I, I, it's spelled different too. I know. Yeah. Um, and and I, I have a um, glass of horse soldier bourbon, cask strength, cut necessarily cut with some fever tree ginger ale oh. is my favorite it's 122 proof so yeah it's <laughs> i'm cutting this <laughs> yeah. well, but uh it's it's still very nice lots of flavor so your health sir yours because so the reason i i do a drinking competition as an episode what you think i'm I bet a lot of people would tune in for it, but yeah, <laughs> um, um, I we compete. Uh, you know, I watch you drink and <laughs> and okay, <laughs> a judged competition. Yeah. <laughs> we were just talking about <clears throat> the reason I thought this might be an interesting topic right now, or what what has brought it to mind is that uh, in our our SCA, our medieval um, uh, organization that we belong to. Coming up in a few weeks, very few weeks, is the biggest gathering that the organization has. It's referred to as the Pensac War. Um, it happens in Pennsylvania every year, um, late July, early August. This is the 50th. Yes, this is a big one. Um, should probably have record number, record attendance, even despite a sort of downturn after COVID. Mm -hmm. um, but this year they've they've decided it has always been or or at least traditionally has been a, a competition between the kingdom of the east and the kingdom of the middle our kingdom 
plus allies. Plus, yeah, plus, and the ally, but the the it is yeah. the east versus the middle, and they both bring their allies to the various uh, battles and so on. This year they have decided that it'll still be between the east and the well. Some years it has been the east and the middle together against everybody else. Yes. This year they have decided that it will still be the east versus middle, but there will be no points. There will be no the battles won't count for anything. Um, now I'm sure that that will not that that will not stop many many people from counting all the while. I have already seen people setting social media groups to keep track of points. Yeah, uh, and. That's fine. I guess that's what's fun for some people. Um, but this is what has brought this up to me about the, the nature of competition. I'm all for this no points yep. stuff. This I would I would rather it every year be a hey, it's it's red versus blue. Pick your side. We don't care. Nobody yep. cares. Fight where you want. Fight with whom you want. Go have fun. Make new friends. Like the, um, in the Kingdom of Kalantir, the Lilies War, where they pick a different, different theme. Yeah, every yeah year. or some some frivolous and arbitrary division right. of sides. Yeah, peanut and butter a, jelly, or yeah, yeah. I think that, and I think that's a pretty uh, innovative solution to the problem of. Well, it's all for fun too, and then, and then, yeah. But the, I think one of the questions is whether or not people <clears throat> will strive as with as much enthusiasm or diligence or perseverance if it's just for fun, if there are no points, and that's if there's no. Uh, it's an interesting question to me because uh, you and I both are competitive in uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and but there are some things for which competition is unnecessary and I will e both of us e either of us will try to do our best because we're competing against ourselves or we're trying to do better or and um, some in some things, though, a bit of competition can increase my enthusiasm and my energy. Sure. And so it depends on the situation. Um, it's not always necessary. Not everything has to be a competition. Well, and there's also the being too competitive can lead to winning at any cost. And that is what we are specifically trying to avoid. The idea that it doesn't matter how you win, as long as you win, is kind of anathema in our organization. And for those who don't know, the, the sport, the sword sport, is scored on an honor system. The person who is struck decides whether or not it was sufficient. And right. <clears throat> That is somewhat unusual. Um, I've certainly seen, <clears throat> I've seen tennis players <clears throat> um, correct a call um, from the judges, say, "No, no, my shot was out," or "No, no, the shot that you said it was out from my opponent was actually good," and then get in trouble for doing that. Yeah from their team, their coach, their so on, if they're playing on, the, on a, a team. Um, <clears throat> well, it, it happened to me back in high school, you know, playing, playing bas just playing high school basketball, for God's sake. Yeah. I stepped out of bounds. I knew it. The, the referee called it. My coach jumped off of the bench saying he wasn't out of bounds. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I was out of bounds. And he looked at me like, sit down shut up you're benched like oh oh telling the truth has been being punished okay <laughs> yeah and that really a lot of high school sports and college sports too gives 
lie to the idea that competitive sports, team sports are about learning sportsmanship and building um, character character and citizenship and all that. Um, <laughs> of course, uh, for some members of our society, our country, that's exactly what they've learned, winning at any, at any cost. Mm -hmm. And I think it's particularly egregious and obvious in the political sphere where people are focused not on what is for the good, but on winning on their right. side. And so we'll, even to the idea that um, they won't agree to even consider legislation that their side doesn't support. They won't individually consider it. It's, it's, it's really unfortunate that it's, but it's about winning. And I think the news media also tends to cover elections, not focusing on the issues, but talking about the what's referred to as the horse race aspect of yeah. it between candidates. Um, <clears throat> so, and, and yet I can see how competition will energize me, will bring up my enthusiasm for what I'm doing in some areas. Um, I dislike competition, arts competitions. Compete. Yeah, we talked about this a while ago that um, I, I have a hard time with subjectively judged, any kind of subjectively judged competition. Yep. Um, you talk about like gymnastics or ice skating or any of those kinds of things where, and it used to be, we remember the Olympics in the 70s and 80s when the joke was about the East German or the Russian judges just yep. giving anybody but an Eastern Bloc athlete a low score there was absolutely there was corruption in yeah that. and that's been covered it's been very widely covered the corruption in gymnastics judging and in ice skating judging uh, <clears throat> ice skating used to require there were were i forget what they called them but they were required accuracy movements figure oh, yeah fun i know what you're talking about it's like a yeah, fundamental yeah, skills thing they, they used to require it, but they didn't all often televise that part no but they eliminated that but somebody would go into the free skating portion with a lead from their the quality of their precision in that um and there i've seen explanations of the judging in in gymnastics and there's there's a lot of precision that goes oh, yeah. judging about are the feet straight and together and the body position is it straight and how long is this held and that held and it's it's very there's a lot of precision and not i i absolutely admire the dedication and the skill the artistry and the athleticism in that, in both of those. Um, <clears throat> but the for some, I think in, in gymnastics, the floor routine is the one that seems to have the most artistry in as a component of the judging. Well, it's set to music and it's there's for, a, there are dance elements to it. I think I think that it 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 has always seemed to me I'm, as much as I enjoy watching them and I do it has seemed to me like judging like a ballet as a competition mm. and I the athleticism and artistry combined in ballet is extraordinary um, and I in, really enjoy watching ballet. But I don't think it should be a competition either. Um, no, I, I agree. Uh, and I'm I'm also uh, in agreement with you that I'm I am competitive, and there are th things like well, I can't I can't go to a I, I avoid going to say like family reunions and having a 
a friendly game of volleyball. <laughs> no, you don't want me in your friendly game of volleyball. Yeah. Because if, if, if there are points, if there's a score going to, you know, I am going to play as hard as I can because that's my nature. And I'm just going to make everybody upset. <laughs> if, isn't that what Worf said in one episode of Star Trek? Um, well, he's something. Uh, it, well, if the points don't matter, why do you keep score? Sorry, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, kapla. <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, and, and that's and that's an, a really a good question. Really, what if it's a competition? Compete. If it's a game, try to win, or else why? play at all you don't have to invest anything in winning or losing and you certainly if you win you should do it gracefully and if you lose you should do it even more gracefully and i think that actually i think winning should be more well either one needs to be done with a certain amount of grace yeah and and i think you've hit on something is that the when people tie winning or losing to their self-worth Hmm. And it's a problem. It, they should be able to go in and win and or compete absolutely to the fullest extent of their ability and persevere and drive themselves to go beyond what they previously had done. And if they win, great. And if they don't, they should understand and accept that. Um, it has... it. <clears throat> as um, um, <clears throat> as an alumni of uh, Northwestern University that did not win a football game for like two and a half years when I was an undergraduate, and then started to have winning seasons, and you know last year was terrible and for football, but um, that was seemed to be an exception. They've been doing pretty well, no longer a pushover, but when they start winning other teams the the commentators um the sports commentators and the other teams would talk about how they blew it not about how good the other team was they would right. not give credit to the to the winning team because they were lost to a team they expected to win right oh. And well, so there was a, a element of denial and um, trying to save face, I think, until they finally had to acknowledge that they were that they were good. And I've had that before too, when when competing in the mm -hmm. SCA, when I would I would beat someone, I would win a fight, and they would talk about their mistakes they wouldn't talk about right sure done to actively defeat them or even even if i will usually have that conversation when i when i lose for instance the other side of that is saying yeah i i i know what i know the mistake i made good yeah. for you capitalizing on it exactly that's the skill. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did that wrong. I'm going to try and do better next time. But you won it. I'm not taking that away. Yeah. You capitalized. I failed. Good, you know, good game. You know, that's that's the essence of that that sportsmanship. Where when I was a kid, you know, you lose the soft softball game, you still had to line up there and go shake hands with the other team. Yep. Yep. And they were, and they were. The winning team was required to say good game. <laughs> yeah. Um <clears throat> and I I think that there have been examples going back to politics, there have been examples in the recent past of the loser in an election refusing to give a concession speech, refusing to call the winner oh, yeah. congratulate them refusing to accept the results yeah and uh, yes yeah, and claiming that they were cheated that it was false the the, yeah. the win wasn't real that the you know it's <clears throat> a striking 
a, a striking mm-hmm. testimony of lack of character. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's what it all comes down to. Um. <clears throat> um. Yes. And and we talk about that in our in our sport because we are a, we are self judged. We we put a premium on how well do you self judge? Yeah. I mean that it is it's integral to our sport, and I think it's what I, one of the things I like about our sport. A lot of guys who are God help them more competitive than me don't like that. Don't like their opponent being able to decide whether they've won or lost. Yeah. They they want some some objective criteria or they want somebody else to tell them. And I I don't understand. You're still asking for somebody else to tell you who won. Yeah. In this in this in our case it's at least the guy you're competing against and yeah. not somebody standing over here who might have their own biases. Um the science fiction author Robert Asprin, who was a peripheral member of of the SCA, um, one of the one of the founders of um, a group known as the Horde within the SCA, uh, was a science fiction author, and he wrote a book in which, and I think I think it was inspired somewhat by the problems some people had with self-judging and Mm -hmm. there aren't a lot of those to be clear there um, it's pretty clear that most people are are honest because it's it's valued and it's um recognized in in the society um but he wrote a book about um uh, a time when in the future when everybody were these suits and if they were struck and i don't remember if it was weapon physical weapons or weapons fire or simulated or whatever if they were struck in an arm the arm the the suit would stiffen up and they couldn't use the arm and they'd okay. the leg the suit would the leg would stiffen up they couldn't use that and if they were struck in the head or the body then they were defeated and i think i've think read that in the their their Helmet would go black or something, wouldn't it? Right. They, right. Yeah. Okay. And, and there are people who would do that. I mean, there are. I've heard conversations over the years about, well, we should have force sensors and accelerometers on things, and it's like, you know, you are, you are, taking that. You're you're trying to remove the the human element which is exactly what is the foundation of the honor system and yeah. and why it's called an honor system too because there's honor in in that honesty in saying no no it was it was good yeah and i and i i think that I have long believed that there is a a huge value to it because because we are we are not just a sport we are a society and your standing in that society is social. I mean, your how you behave on the field will impact what kind of recognition and reward you might be looking for later on. I've seen the renown of a lifetime be destroyed in an instant by mm-hmm. someone's bad behavior because people obviously win they gain by winning but they gain more by losing well than they do by winning badly yes if you if someone values winning at any cost the cost is often their renown their reputation their social standing, their ability to continue competing. Right. Um, Whereas somebody who loses well, loses graciously, loses honestly, and admits that has a path to go forward and keep competing and keep learning and eventually win in the, in the right way. Right. 
So it'll be interesting to see what um, what this particular Penzik is going to be like with no points. It was um, <clears throat> this time at least it was the idea was introduced well in advance rather yes. than as a last minute surprise, which did not go over well. Um, but that's a that's a another that's a history lesson in managing expectations people's expectations so yeah that that's a lesson that was learned hopefully some years ago and hasn't been forgotten yet yes. um, and and the you were saying earlier it certainly won't affect how hard i fight in in a given battle um that's because like you said, we are, we're competing against ourselves. We are, we are looking, we're out there, at least part of the reason we're out there is to push ourselves and test ourselves. Yep. So, I mean, I'm, I'm less at, at, in my advanced years, I'm less interested in pushing myself past my known limits um, well, than I used to be. I think competition is useful in finding out that your limits are further than you thought they were yeah um, yeah um <clears throat> but it's, so is my recuperative time <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> uh, i think competition also particularly when it's competing against yourself but also in a one-on-one -on -one competition can it can lead you to creative invention oh sure that that the competitive situation can caught can your when your mind is working really quickly and your body is responding really quickly you can do something you had not even thought of doing spontaneously um and uh i've had those moments and they're wonderful where you you simply invent something new right. on the spot and um that's a wonderful feeling part of that is the competition bringing that out in you right um, i've we were in fact i was talking with somebody just this weekend about uh our crown tournament which is or twice a year, the, the in some ways it is the one of the most competitive tournaments that we have, and I think that's mainly because the outcome of that actually matters. What mm -hmm. who who wins that tournament actually gets something. Most of our tournaments are you know here have a goblet or here you know you get a, a prize a, and you take it home and you put it with your other prizes but the winner of a crown tournament can have an effect on their kingdom and their society so fighting in those tournaments i will miss because that that meaningfulness gave me an edge it made a difference in how the tournament and how fighting in it felt yeah. uh, and that doesn't come from other competitions um the yes yep i agree i've had that same experience and, and really, i've been i really like it too yeah I, i've been pushing lately to tell people to you should fight in these crown tournaments and the 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 varied responses are often well, I'm not quite ready yet. I don't, my job is this, or I was, you know, we just had a kid or we just moved into a new house. And like, look, man, when you crowd tournament is like having a baby. Yeah. You're never a hundred percent ready, perfectly prepared to do it. You've got to do it and you'll figure it out. And mm -hmm. lots of people will help you. So if you're out there and you're watching this and you are thinking about fighting a crown tourney, go ahead and do it, do it. Your, don't worry about winning. Your chances of winning in your very first crown tournament, pretty slim. <laughs> so that, that's oh, what we're talking to me. Oh, no, no, no. I was talking to our audience out there. You weren't talking to me. 
you you can enter a crown tournament anytime you like. Yeah, yeah, I might. <laughs> Go ahead. You should. Yep. Yep. Um. So. So, <clears throat> competition, we think is good if it's handled the right way, and in the right situations, and if it's approached with the right attitude. Yes. Yes. But and, not and nothing. It's not for all situations. No, there's nothing inherently wrong with being competitive. I I tell my students that they are not competing with the other students in class, that they actually should be collaborating, except on an exam. They should be, if they know how to do something and somebody doesn't, help them. And if somebody right. knows that you need help with something, ask. And you should all help each other, except during exams. <laughs> except during exams. <laughs> um, and that's not, you're not competing against other people. I don't, it's not a curve, you know, I'm not, right. I want everybody to succeed. But you're, it's a, it's a test. It's not a competition. It's a test. Right. Yeah. The, there's an objective that yes. you will score on and that's it. When you are graduated and you're looking for a job, you're competing against other people for an available position. But once you get into a job and into a company, you're, you should again go back to collaboration, not competing against other people in your company, but working with them. Now, I've certainly seen companies that where the management had implemented the idea that teams within the company or divisions within the company should be competing against each other. And that's a really bad idea because as we saw with Sears, that's one of the things that led to the downfall of Sears. There were a bunch of other things too, but the divisions within Sears were competing against each other. And some of them actually started actively sabotaging each right. other and because they got reward by not necessarily by exceeding their expectations but by just by doing better than the other guy so well, you're making sure that they couldn't meet theirs you look better because yeah you can either do better yourself or you can make sure the other guy doesn't that's a terrible way to manage a business um at least well, it's a uh, terrible way to live yes right i mean so that's a place where competition within your team is bad you're competing against other teams you know that's that's the difference right and and again we we talked about competing against compete against yourself first that's what practice is that's what training is, is, is you competing against yourself so that you are, you're the better, you're whatever it is, martial artist, artist, athlete, whatever it is, you're getting better. Your, your goal is to be better than you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that's the competition. You only fail if you're not, if you're not moving forward. Well, I'd say that even if you're, on a plateau that's that's a normal part of your forward movement well that's forward not up necessarily yeah you keep you keep once you hit the plateau you keep working until you start to go up again but that plateau is still you're still moving along yeah. a line yeah so we can st stretch that metaphor out a little bit but but yeah the the stretching is good <laughs> another another part of practice yeah <laughs> maintaining your ability to continue practicing yes so so, so okay I, yeah i think we've covered that all right any comments or uh any any ideas that you that we don't think you don't think we covered in that little segment please let us know uh put it in the comments send us an email like share all that stuff and find you can find um in our youtube channel 
there's uh, all the episodes are in a now in a podcast list podcast group um, uh, to which we will be uh, adding our uh, audio only our first uh, couple dozen episodes that were audio only we'll be adding that in there so they'll all be in the same location there's there's 52 audio recordings yes 52 episodes that were just that were audio before we went to this marvelous medium of video video yeah so moving pitches <laughs> yeah so so look for us listen for us in uh, audio format mm -hmm. um while you're practicing why yes yes that's uh, our advice is absolutely of critical value while you're while you're um, practicing, particularly our in-depth discussions about comic books. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Things uh, like all of our heroic stuff. Just let it seep into you, make <laughs> you better. <laughs> yeah, seepage because seepage is good. <laughs> <laughs> well, depending, but uh, yeah. So. That's it for this episode, I think. Um, and until we see you again, until you see us again, be yep. thou a good night and true. <laughs>